you for joining us in Finding God in the World of Video Games. In today's Rewind, we're taking a look at origin stories. And in video games, they're not only an expectation, they're practically a rite of passage. If you want to get to the part of the game where your character can execute their coolest moves, demonstrate the abilities that we saw and drooled about during all of the game trailers, we better buckle up for a long ride, because the person we start the game as is rarely that person. They tend to lack all of the powers we associate with them. They possess a small and insignificant life bar with an equally empty skill tree. They can typically scarcely hold their own in a fight with a common street thug when we first get started. We have come to expect that we must slowly become the acrobatic and skilled hero we originally imagined over the course of many hours of learning moves, unlocking attributes, and finding gear. And if we have persevered, by the end of the game we just might look like, act like, and fight like the superhero we planned on playing as for the last 20 hours. But after many years of this same pattern in video games, Insomniac took the bold move to shoot a stream of web and swing right past the expected origin story of Peter Parker, and they gave us a fully capable, combat-ready, mature-ish Spider-Man for their first foray with this license, and it's a move that was received very warmly and enthusiastically across the board as critics and gamers alike reveled in the simple joy of having a ready-made Spider-Man just add control. I mean, after all, who wants to play out sequences where Peter can't quite get the grip of shooting webs and destroys everything in his bedroom, or slams into buildings repeatedly as he works on his timing? I think we would all gladly skip past the tedious amount of research needed to formulate his webbing solution. And honestly, only someone truly heartless would want to once again fail to reach Uncle Ben in time, just because we are foolishly exploiting our powers for personal gain. The truth is, origin stories are messy, they're painful, they're full of mistakes and embarrassing moments that nobody really wants to relive. It's ever so much easier to take on the life of our hero once they move past all of the drama, the awkwardness, the trials, and the scarring that accompanies the beginning of their journey. It's refreshing to see the hero show up at just the right moment, with battle scars across their face because you know this isn't their first rodeo. But the truth is, the story in those scars probably tells a narrative that indicates that their first rodeo went really, really poorly. In many ways, King David might be considered the quintessential action hero of the Old Testament. I don't mean to put down the amazing accomplishments of so many other men and women who boldly and heroically carried the torch when their time came, but David's story hits all of the beats and and in between a very fair mix of his exploits and his failures that were captured in the books of 1st and 2nd Samuel, combined with some of the deep glimpses we get into his soul throughout the Psalms, there's simply very few individuals who are so deeply honest about their shortcomings while also fairly capturing their legacy quite like David. The harsh truth about David is his origin story isn't all about slaying giants or choosing honor over justice. It's messy often bloody, and full of mistakes, some that are obvious, some a little less apparent until his story plays all the way out. I would like to follow him as the bold young man who killed bears and lions and goliaths, but I'm not so sure about that coward who literally faked mental illness as a way to avoid confrontation in 1 Samuel 21. Now I do dig the love story between him and his first wife, Michael. But as he accumulates additional wives and concubines, he seems a little less romantic, maybe a little bit more of a playboy like we see in 2 Samuel 3. I do love that he follows a code of honor in his stubborn unwillingness to harm King Saul. But then he allows a man like Joab, who was his nephew, to be his right-hand man and captain of his army, in spite of the fact that he clearly demonstrated a lack of fitness for the position over and over and over again, and often contradicted David's guidance, murdering Abner, David's own son Absalom, Uriah the Hittite, and was eventually put to death by David's son Solomon for all of these crimes. The truth is that the origin story of David isn't much different than yours or mine. It just played out on a larger screen. But it is in those very origin stories that he becomes the man who unites Israel and conquers Jerusalem. Was he flawed? Absolutely. Morally compromised? Unfortunately, very often. In our day and age, he would have been massacred on the internet. 
He had been forced to delete his Twitter. He would have had to make his Facebook private. He would probably been recorded by TMZ on his rooftop scoping out Bathsheba. But without these failures, he would not have been able to write the many psalms that we reach out to in moments of crisis and often utilize as prayers when our own words fail us. Your origin story is likely very messy. I know mine certainly is. And I would never have chose my path and the mistakes that I made to bring me to the place that I am now. I regret every one of those poor choices, as much as any of us ever could. But please listen to me carefully here. Our individual origin story is essential to the path we are meant to walk. Even if those decisions had negative repercussions, it does not make them good or right, but they were still a required component of the path necessary to reach our current destination. Every choice Peter Parker made, good or bad, led him to become the Spider-Man we're all playing as right now. Well, if you have, you know, PlayStation 4, or legally obtained copy of Spider-Man anyway, it's awesome to get to suit up as this seasoned and capable Spider-Man, but the truth is, we don't typically get to start out that way in life. Nobody does. It is through the missteps, the accidents, and even the brazen failures that we learn to be the hero that someone else will need. Whether we wear our battle scars physically or buried deep in a place no one else can see, it is your origin story that will be what connects you to someone else in need. Don't be ashamed from it. Don't hide from it. Don't run from it. Simply be the person who lived it, survived it, and is here to fight another day. Embrace the Spider-Man that you are now, even if the path you took to get here was not on. You cannot undo the past any more than Peter can bring back Uncle Ben. But what you can do is start using your powers for God's glory. You can stand up for those who are in need. You can empathize with those who have failed and point them back on the correct path. We can stop regretting how we got here and start figuring out what we're supposed to be doing here. That spider bite that should have been fatal may have been what placed you on the path of your true destiny all along.